Now, once we have the setup done for the Python, then we have done for the IDEs we are going to use. Of course, we're not going to use all. Uh, we'll start with one. But before we jump into VS Code or PyCharm, the idea is when you learn a language, you want to start from the basics. And that's what we are going to do now. And when you install Python, so in fact, before we go for Python, I want to show you one more thing. When you open a command prompt on Windows, this is the command prompt which you can see on the screen. And on this command prompt, when you perform some operations, so let's try DIR. -E now, when I say, when I do that, it will list all the files in the in this particular folder. So in the Naveen folder, I got all these files, right? So basically, command, fr command prompt understands the command. Example, CLS will clear it. But when I perform 2 plus 3, it will say 2 plus 3 is not uh, recognized as internal or external commands. That basically means your command prompt work with the commands. So pre-built commands, it can be internal or external. But on the other hand, in Windows, basically we got uh, something called a PowerShell. Now in this PowerShell, which looks like a command prompt, but a bit different, this is a tool built by Microsoft to have their own shell kind of thing, which we have in Linux-based OS or Mac. So we got shell there. Uh, where we use bash. Here, they have created something called bash. I mean, sounds good, but uh, it's more like a bash, but then for Windows. And now it is, they have open sourced it so we can use it in, in multiple places. Now, PowerShell supports scripting. Okay, so when I say the same command dir, I think the command dir works here, command ls works here for the same thing because ls coming from the, uh, the shell background, uh, then I can also use clear for clearing. I can also use CLS. So it's a combination of command prompt with shell and it's fun. But since you can run a scripting language, so even Python people call it scripting language and makes sense because you can write scripts there. Uh, but then by default, we got this shell. And in shell, if you say two plus three, you do get the output as five. Okay, so this is how you run shell. Again, we are not here to run shell programming, but you can write uh, shell commands here like echo, echo, and if I say Naveen, it will print Naveen. So echo is a command in shell to print something. Uh, but if you want to do that in Python, how will you do that? So let's say I want to get into Python, and that's why you can type Python in the command prompt or in the PowerShell. It works. When you say enter, it will open a prompt. Now this is called the Python IDLE. In fact, you can open that Python IDLE in a separate window. But you can do all the things here. So let's say if you don't want to do that here, so I can say ideally, and it will open a separate prompt where you can perform the operation. So we have an option of creating a file. You can edit the file. You can run the script and you can configure. So there are a lot of options here which you can work with. If the font is small, okay, it's assuming the height, not the font. Okay, but we have to find some setting for the increasing of the font. This is the uh, Python IDLE, which is the integrated development learning environment. So it makes sense to test something, to learn. But then we are going to use prompt here, the Python prompt. And this is also a REPL, which is read, evaluate, print loop. REPL, where you can read the text, you can write the text. You can evaluate something, you can print something, so that's how it is. Okay, so here what I'm going to do. First of all, I will say 2 plus 3. The space is not mandatory. I will just increase the size a bit. So the space is not mandatory here, but it looks good. I will say enter and you got 5. Okay, that works. What else we can do? We can perform multiple mathematical operations here. So we, we have done for the addition. Maybe we, if you want to do subtraction, you can do that. Uh, maybe you can if you want to multiply... Uh, you can do that. Even you can have not just one operations, but multiple. So let's say 5 plus 9 minus 4. Even that works. Oh, okay. I was we got the same 10, 10. Just a coincidence. But it has to follow some grammar, right? Example, let's say if I say 8 plus 9 minus 4, it will work. But what if I miss 4 there? Will it work? If I say enter, it will give you some bad words. It will say Python has some issues in the file, which is creating the behind the scene. It says invalid syntax. So this is not a syntax which will work. Okay, so I will just play it out. I want an empty screen. So yeah, you it will follow the grammar. You have to follow it. Otherwise, it will not work. Now, let's say uh, I'm going to say 9 plus 2 multiplied by 3. Now, of course, there should be some output for this. And when I read this from start to end, it will be 9 plus 2, 11. 11 into 3 is 33. That's what I'm expecting. On the other hand, if you know the rules of board mass, 
where multiplication will come first, then it will be doing the addition. In that scenario, it will be 2 into 3, which is 6. 6 plus 9 is 15. So what do you think? Will it be 33 or 15? Let's try it out. When I say enter, we got 15. is because it is following the baud mass. So it is multiplying first, then it is adding it. But what if I want to add first, then I, I want to multiply. So as for the baud mass, we have to put a brackets there. So I can put a bracket, 9 plus 2, and then I will say multiplied by 3. And when I say enter, it will be 33. So yeah, baud mass is there. So what else we can do here? Let's say I want to find a cube of a number. So 8 into 8 into 8, that's how you find a cube. Of course, square is 8 into 8, cube is 8 into 8 into 8. If you want to find 8 power 4, it will be 8 into 8 into 8 into 8. I, I'm not sure how many times I have said 8. doesn't matter. But you got the point. When I say enter, we got 5 and 2, right? But what if I want to find 8 power 12 or 8 power 10? That's a big number. So, of course, I can damage my keyboard by typing all those things or we can use something called a power, something like a caret sign. This should work, but it's not working. It's not working. It is doing something else. We'll talk about it, what it's doing later. Uh, something to do with bitwise, but at this point, it's not working. So, we have to use double star to do the power. So, 8 power 10 and this is the number. I'm not sure if 8 power 10 is that number. We just have to accept whatever Python says. Or we can just find for 3. If it says 5 and 2, then the previous one should be correct. Provided the value, the output of this is not out of range. Okay? Uh, so, that's the tricky part. Anyway, the point is, this is how you do the power. Uh, we have not tried the division. Let's try division now. So, let's say I want to do uh, 8 divided by 2. Of course, it should be 4. But then we are not getting 4, we are getting 4.0. Why? It's because when you say 9 divided by 2, you got 4.5. That means when you do divisions, you do get the point values. Now, these are called float numbers. So, it says 9 divided by 2, of course, you are getting 4.5. That means when you do 8 divided by 2, you might get the decimal value or the point values here. So, 4.0 makes sense. Uh, but then when you try to understand the division of a number, what you get is you get two outputs, right? So if you see on the screen here, we got, let's say, if you're dividing a 9 by 2, you got two things. One is the quotient, which is 4, and the remainder, which is 1. So how do I do that? What if I want quotient and remainder separately? In that case, you can say 9. You just have to put double slash. And when you say 2, now you will only get the quotient. But what if you want a remainder? In that case, you have to use something called a mod symbol. And you said 2 and you got 1. This will make much more sense when, once we start with uh, E1 or examples with the conditional statements. But you will see that later. At this point, just remember, if you want a quotient from a division, you say 4. You, I mean, you say double slash. If you want a remainder, you use a percentage symbol. We can also call it as a mod. So that's how you basically perform the operations in the Python prompt. Again, we are not using the VS Code other stuff at this point. We'll do that later, but this is what it is. So let me talk about something about variables. Of course, we'll not go in detail. There should be a separate video dedicated for variables. So let's say I want to perform some operation. Maybe we can pick up from any one of it. Uh, maybe I want to pick up this particular operation here. So in the prompt, you can just keep the, or you can press the arrow button up, or then you, you will get the previous commands. Now here, when I do that, of course, I got 5 and 2. And then, if I want to use this value in the next operation. So, let's say I'm, I'm performing 5 plus, And I want to say 5 plus 5 and 2. But then, I'm not sure about the previous value. I'm saying 5 and 2 here. But maybe I'm not sure about the previous values. In that case, if I want to pick the last value, how will I do it? In that case, you can use something called an underscore. Which is kind of a box which stores the previous value. I can say variable, but we don't have a name for it. Now, what do you mean by variable? Imagine variable as a box in which you have a value, if that makes sense. So, a box where you have a value and we are naming it something. So, here the underscore is a name for it uh, because that's the only box you can see in front of you. So, it says 5 plus box. Okay, and box says 512. When you say enter, we got 517. But now, if I say 2 plus 512, 
I can't say underscore because when you say underscore now, it will pick up the last value, which is 517. Okay, what I want is 512. Let me show you the proof. When I say enter, we got 519 because 2 plus the previous value, which is 517. But I want 512. Now, if you want to do that, we have a simple concept. Let me clear it out. What you do is you store this operation, which is this, in a variable, a named variable. So let's say I will say num1 equal to. Now, what is this num1? Num1 is the variable, a box with a name as num1. Then in that box, you are storing a value which is 8 power 3. That equal to is for the assignment. So this value is getting assigned to this num1. So of course, it will first evaluate the value, which is 512, goes into num1. Now, when I say an enter, you can see it is executed but you're not getting anything because in the previous operation, when you were doing, whatever we are doing, you are getting the print of it in the next line. But here it's not doing it. It's because when you assign a value, it says, okay, I'm done my job. I'm assigning that value to a variable. If you want to print it, just mention that you want to print it. So you say num1. But then in actual programming of Python, when you do that later, you will be using something called print. Again, we have not talked about what is print till this point, but it works. We'll talk about it later, what is print is. This is the way you do that in the upcoming sessions, not here. But here, num1 works. Okay, now, if I want to perform some operation, let's say 4 plus 8, and this is 12, but now I want to perform the operation, which is 5 plus. Now, this plus, I want to add 5 and 2. So, of course, I can type 5 and 2, or I can't use underscore, because underscore will be the last value, which is 12. I can use num1, That if that makes sense. Not just num1, I can create num2 as well with a new value, let's say simply 8. And now I'm saying num1 plus num2, and you can see we got 520. And the beauty is, you can create another variable, you can store the addition of num1 plus num2 in this. And now I can print num3. So it's that awesome. So this is how you can store the values here. So yeah, that's about it. Now, what if you want to work with text? Because at this point, we are only working with numbers. We're not working with text. How will you do that? How will you perform operation on that? Uh, let's see that in the next video.